All right, so now that Zack Snyder has wasted a bunch of my time, I don't want to waste too much of yours. So let's talk about this terrible movie called Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. God help us. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Before we get started talking about this hot piece of garbage, uh, subscribe to the channel. Click the red subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you know whenever I post a new piece of content. Okay, um, in December, Zack Snyder, world famous director, put out a movie called Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Um, it was terrible. And I don't know if you know about Zack Snyder's like history as a filmmaker, but it's spotty at best. 300 was great. Dawn of the Dead was pretty good. Um, I thought Watchmen is probably the movie that's aged the best. Uh, that movie was kind of way ahead of its time, especially given the recent uh, glut of superhero movies that have kind of taken over and infested everything. And, um, and then, let's see, he did Sucker Punch, which was terrible. Man of Steel, which was decent. And I'm like target audience for that movie because I'm Superman guy. Uh, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, which was awful in every way. And then Justice League came out when he was dealing with a personal tragedy and he had to be taken off of that movie. Joss Whedon came in, completely ruined everything. And the theatrical cut of that movie was terrible. There was this big outcry to release the Snyder cut, partially out of support for him and the desire that people had to see a Justice movie that wasn't complete and utter trash. So then the Zack Snyder Justice League cut came out and it was way better. It's four hours long, which is like way too long for a movie, but that movie is actually great. I don't care what haters say. I think the Zack Snyder cut of that movie is great. Um, and so that's kind of his history as a filmmaker. Now, nobody has, I mean, there's probably been people who are more critical, but I've been extremely critical of Disney on this channel. Uh, because I think they've been terrible over the course of the last decade. I think their handling of Lucasfilm, particularly by Kathleen Kennedy, has been unforgivable to have a, such a successful franchise. They somehow, after over a decade, have not managed to make a single dime off of Star Wars. They haven't even broke even. They haven't broke even on their investment, which to me is insane. They've made three, four, I'd say three or four good decisions when it comes to uh, their handling of all that, and that's basically it. Uh, the first good decision was Rogue One. The second good decision was Andor. The third good decision was the Jedi games that EA made, although giving EA the license for Star Wars was overall pretty terrible because they didn't do much with it, but the Jedi games are great. And then the fourth decision is when they decided not to give Zack Snyder a dime for Rebel Moon. He originally pitched this as a Star Wars story to Disney, and they took a flyer. They said, no, thank you. And considering how badly Disney has mismanaged everything Star Wars and are starting to do the same with Marvel, um, that was the right decision. These movies have been awful. Truly, truly awful. The first one had a pretty good performance from Ed Skrein as the bad guy. And the last 15, 20 minutes of that movie were okay. The rest of it was terrible. This movie somehow manages to be even worse, like orders of magnitude worse. I don't care about any of these characters. The twists that are here are completely dumb and stupid. There's a decent twist in the first one that's a little predictable. Um, but this movie just suffers in every way, shape, or form. The story they came up with is boring, equal parts boring, and like, I don't know. It's just boring. It's boring. I don't care. The characters are completely unengaging. The performances from the actors, save Scrines, are awful. There is no other good performance in this movie. No, like, none. The lead actress, whose name is Sophia Butella, is not good in this. Maybe she's a good actress. This movie certainly doesn't make it seem like that's the case. She's really, 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 really like bad here. There's a love story that I don't care about. Um, the movie, Zack Snyder's like, the one thing he does really well is make his movies look good. 
Visual effects are usually pretty on point. Uh, this movie looks terrible. It's, it's like muddy. If you like the colors brown and red, okay. But this movie just like bathes itself in dirt and dust and red and brown. And that's, that's like the color palette. It's muddy looking. So everything's like blurry. Sometimes there's like a little bit of focus in the center, but that's essentially it. I also might just be getting old or senile or both, but they, I could have sworn I watched in real time the frame rate go from whatever the cinematic frame rate is, 27 or 28, and jump to 60 for like five seconds and then go back. Maybe that's just me and I don't know what I'm talking about. That's also very possible. Um, but there were just weird decisions all around from a presentation standpoint. Oftentimes it looks like it was a made for TV movie. And I just don't get it, man. The story, the script, the acting, everyone seems disengaged. This movie is chronically boring and I don't know what the hell they're doing. Apparently he's putting out a director's cut of the first movie at some point this year. A director's cut for a movie that came out within the last six months is actually insane. And I, I just, I don't understand, man. I, I really, this is a disappointing effort from Zack Snyder. Probably the worst two movies that he's ever made, which is saying something because he's made some trash. So I don't know, man. Disney was right to take a flyer on this. These two movies, this one in particular, are, are really, really, really bad. And of course they're making more. <laughs> because why wouldn't they? Uh, yeah. Zero out of 10, could not recommend these movies uh, at all in good conscience. Um, yeah, that's all I got. Thanks for checking out this review. If you liked it, found it helpful, I hope you would consider subscribing. You can also like and share the video. That tells the powers that be that it's worth promoting. And hit me up with comments. Let me know if I'm wrong about Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver. And I'll see you next Wednesday at 9 a.m.